for value proposition to the community. Every Wednesday morning, we have two entrepreneurs come in and present. They will present for about six to eight minutes, and then you'll have about 15 minutes to ask them questions and really get down in the weeds with them to find out what are their trials, what are their tribulations, what is their personal story. So at this time, I wanted to just give a shout out to our sponsors, 210 Coffee Roasters, is providing this wonderful coffee that y'all are enjoying today and also the hub of human innovation right here y'all are in it but this is one of the things that we do in the hub of human innovation every wednesday morning we will have the one million cups from nine to ten so i want to remind everyone here to download the mobile app the mobile app is a feature where you can provide presentations or you can apply to present and uh, you can also get feedback on all the presenters or give feedback and uh, we also don't want you to forget to uh, join our community at 1millioncups.com, I'm sorry, 1millioncups.org forward slash El Paso. And you can also follow us on Facebook and on Twitter, okay? <clears throat> so we have extra seats here if anyone wants to move up. And if you don't want to move up, that's okay. Okay. Now, parking is very, very important. <laughs> If you parked in the uh, parking spaces right here in front, you have to be sure to back in, okay? Uh, otherwise, uh, they will give you a love note, right? Okay. Now, if you park over here on Paisano, uh, you can stay all day long because it's free, and it's very easy to walk across the street from Paisano, all right? One hour, one hour across the street? No, in front. Okay, one hour in front. Okay, thank you. You always so good. No, all right, appreciate this. <laughs> Hearing from experience here. All right. So, our first presenter is from the Insights Museum, and I want to present to you Miss Megan Curry. All right. Thank you guys for coming here today and letting me share with you guys a little bit of information about Insights El Paso Science Center. You'll see the strike through on the Science Center, and I'll explain a little bit uh, throughout this presentation why that's there. Today, I'd like to give you an idea about uh, where Insights is coming from, what we're doing now, where we're going, and how you guys can help us get there. So raise your hands if you guys remember the museum that was downtown that went in here back in 1979, the Insights El Paso Science Center is a formerly existed. Okay, so a few of you guys have some reference points for what used to be. It was founded as an interactive science center that was state-of-the-art, way ahead of its time back in 1979, as a project, I believe, between the Junior League and El Paso Electric. It existed here on Santa Fe Street until 2012 when it was demolished for the Chihuahuas baseball stadium. After the demolition of the museum, exhibits were put into storage at the Alamo Elementary School in Segundo Barrio. Originally intended as a storage location, the board eventually decided to open up again as a science center at the location at the Alamo School over here in Segundo Barrio. It operated in this location from 2015 to 2017. We also, around that time, had a pop-up exhibit. If you were at the Bassett Mall uh, in about 2016, 2017, you might have seen our pop-up museum with a bunch of awesome dinosaur skeletons. Unfortunately, in 2017, uh, looking at a bunch of logistical hurdles, operating out of what was basically an abandoned school building, in uh, Segundo Barrio with no parking and crazy electric bills, crazy water bills, and a bunch of restoration work that the board couldn't afford, the board decided that it was time to close the doors to the museum. They did a bunch of community surveys, they talked with folks, they uh, sought consultation from a bunch of different consultants, and eventually decided that Insights could serve more people as a mobile outreach service than they ever did as a physical museum. The board made the decision at this point to take the museum outside of the box and exist as a 100% lean, steam outreach service. Though we don't have a physical museum at this point, Insight's mission is still to promote science, technology, engineering, arts, and math education through exploratory, interactive learning experiences. 
Since making this transition to a 100% outreach service, we have instituted quite a few different programs within the community to serve this mission. Thanks to a generous donation from Stanley Joe, Insights now has about 211 acres of about the base of Mount Cristo Rick. This property contains thousands of different fossilized dinosaur tracks. Raise your hand if you knew that El Paso, right in town, was home to thousands of fossilized dinosaur tracks. The dinosaur tracks were at, dinosaurs were actually walking through this region about 97 million years ago. So we now offer uh, school tours, public tours, and private tours of this dinosaur track site. We've got about 2.5 miles of uh, pretty well groomed trails at this point and different uh, stops and sites along this trail. We just finished last weekend a new training and a whole new fleet of uh, tour guides that will take you on a guided tour of this site. Also thanks to a uh, grant from the El Paso Community Foundation, we've developed uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade curriculum to go along with these dinosaur track schools, dinosaur, uh, dinosaur track tours. We've also issued about 450 student scholarships throughout uh, this spring to get students from Flint Independent School District to our dinosaur tracks completely for free using this grant. Another one of probably my favorite programs that we've started is our Nerd Night series. So we partnered with Centennial Museum over at Utah to launch a whole new series of interactive adult education events that is really centered around getting people together to celebrate science in a new fun place each month. So starting this program back in the winter, we've had nerd nights about once a month. The first one was hot chemistry. We've had uh, drugs, sex, and arachnids over Ge at Geojeskis. We had a huge event about tequila and tequila production over at Centennial Museum. We had a physics of cycling demonstration over at Hody and Finish, and then I think a few of you guys attended our social nerd night uh, last month where we had Hacienda de Chihuahua bring free samples of all their different sotols and we had a botanist talking about the actual plant and then we also had a pitch about a potential sotol plantation. <coughs> our next nerd night coming up is prehistoric tracking. For this one it's going to be a little bit different than some of our other events. It's a Sunday night. It's going to be starting at about 4 p.m. going to 8 p.m. It'll feature a special tour of our dinosaur tracks, a special shorter hike, with actually the gentleman that discovered the track site, Dr. Eric Kappas. He's going to take you on this uh, special tour of the dinosaur tracks, and then we're going to go back to Artemino's Desert Crossing for a dinosaur-themed dinner, dinosaur-themed cocktails, which sound pretty cool, actually, uh, and then a lecture from Dr. Eric Kappas explaining how his knowledge of animal tracking allowed him to see the, animal, the dinosaur tracks in the first place. So that should be a pretty neat one. And then our June Nerd Night is actually going to be with one of our local sponsors here over at Park Tavern. We're going to learn about cryptocurrencies. Another program we started this spring was our Artificial Intelligence Family Challenge Program. This is through a grant from Curiosity Machine. It is providing hands-on activities for middle school students and their families at two middle schools in uh, the Clinton Independent School District again. So these kids are building circuits, they're learning about neural networks, parallel processing, all of these things, doing simple hands-on activities. This will ultimately cum culminate uh, in the winter of 2018 when these families that have been participating throughout the whole program will use the design process to solve a problem in their community. So their solution to whatever their problem is will enter into a global design challenge. There are 60 different partner sites that are running this exact same presentation all throughout the world. So while students in Clint are building circuits out of pipe cleaners, there are also students in Africa and Saudi Arabia doing the same thing. Another one of our large programs is our pop-up museum. As you can see from some of these pictures, we've been out at all kinds of community <coughs> events throughout uh, the winter and spring of 2017 and 2018. We've been at the Wago Tanks Interpretive Fair. We've even at the CS Monster Truck Jam. We've been at Earth Day. We just went up to the Las Cruces Space Festival, where we've been taking a lot of our existing materials, our hands-on interactive.
interactive things like robotics kits, circuitry sets, make your own fossil sets, and taking them out into community events. We recently received a grant from the Herbie Foundation to take what we're doing here and do it on a much larger scale. So thanks to this grant, and hopefully with our next presenter, we're going to be building a big pop-up museum that we can take out, occupy more space, do weekend classes with programming, um, longer demonstrations for robotics and things like that, and have a bigger presence in more community events. This is really going to be the flagship of taking the museum outside of the box and becoming very mobile, taking the programming that used to exist within uh, a box downtown and getting it out into the community. We also have lots of after school programs. We've got summer camps we're putting on. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Special workshops. And again, this is using our existing materials and uh, exhibits from the museum. We've got circuitry sets, engineering design curriculum, robotic sets, and all of these things that we need to get out into the community. <coughs> this summer, so in the, how am I doing on time? You're just going into your question and answer time. Okay. You know, you just, you know. So in 2017, we did 11 different uh, summer, 16 long summer camps for the Isleta Independent School District. This summer, we're launching our whole series of insight-specific summer camps. We'll have at least four different summer camps, those that are listed here, and a drone summer camp, thanks to a partnership with NMSU and the FAA at UTEP this summer. We're also partnering with UTEP to implement a NASA project where students are learning some of these same skills, but through a story arc. Um, it's all about a dystopian future. So, as you can see, since we've shifted to this 100% STEM outreach model, we've built quite a few programs. We've got our dinosaur track tours, our nerd nights, our curiosity machine artificial intelligence program. We've got our STEM pop-up museum that's out in community events and all kinds of STEAM enrichment programs for schools and kids in the summer through summer camps. This is what we're doing now. What's next? We, of course, want to expand and continue to develop these programs. We want to develop a really rich core of volunteers to help run a lot of these programs. We're continuing through uh, future grant funding to develop more and larger global exhibits. We're also looking towards uh, using our entire outdoor classroom and doing outdoor STEAM programs later, probably in 2019. And of course, building all the community partnerships that are necessary to make this happen. So if you like what we're doing, if you see the value, and I, I didn't talk about that, but I'd be happy to later, see the value of why we need STEAM education in El Paso, there's a lot of things that you or your business can do to help support this. We, of course, always need Nerd Night sponsors. Thank you, Matt, for sponsoring our next cryptocurrency Nerd Night. We don't have a sponsor, in fact, for the upcoming uh, prehistoric track of Nerd Night. Those are about once a month, and we're always open to uh, working with different sponsors for these events. We also offer booth sponsorships. If your uh, furniture company wants to sponsor a mobile makerspace that's set, set in the Bassett Place Mall for two months, we're, working, we're excited to work with you on those. Of course, cash and in-kind donations, uh, volunteer support, please let me know if you're interested in that. And then just personally, uh, join our newsletter to learn more about our uh, Nerd Night programs and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for more information about programs. And with that, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Thank you guys for having me and take any questions you might have. Yes, sir. Bonsa wants to know how much the Nerd Night sponsorship is. It is 500. Oh, so 500. Oh, we're, uh, we're probably it's yeah, going to go up. Uh, and my board York. president keeps telling me that that's too inexpensive. Uh, but with that, you're on our website for a whole year in our sponsor Hall of Fame. Your name is associated with all of our social media posts. It's on all of our posters, and of course, we're a nonprofit, so I think that's tax deductible. Yes. Tell me the, the date of the uh, Artemis. It is May 20th. 20th. And while we're not discouraging families from going, these nerd nights are generally more for adults. We did have a bunch of kids at the Sex, Drugs, and Raptors one. They had a great time, but uh, they have hoping a lot of that flew over their heads. <laughs> Other questions? Hey, uh, amazing proceedings that they come here in July will probably be very interested in volunteers to help you. So how do they get in touch with you and what's the event process and so working with kids to assist so uh, I can give you my business card and you can forward that to them and then all of our uh, volunteers if they're at any point in time to be 
alone with kids, uh, then we do a full background check. If it's just a, a UTEP student who wants to come help us with an event and I or another staff member is going to be there, then we don't always background check. But if they're going to be a, a long-term volunteer, like all of our Dynatrax guides are, are fully background checked. Okay. So what is a, you guys were a, you know, a box to we're store, a box. Yes. and now you're not, and now you're doing this, and you've kept it together, but what is the five-year platform on this? Or are you just going to remain this um, mobile thing that goes around, uh, you know, trying to stay pretty? Are we going to eventually go for another box? Probably not. We would like to build a science center and a classroom space at our Dynatrack site. Currently, that's just a parking lot. That would also allow us to have a bigger presence there and protect the, the fossils that are there. Um, the, we did just finish, the board finished a strategic plan for the next three years, and right now that mostly involves growing as an outreach service. El Paso is not going to have a science center for the next three years. The El Paso Children's Museum is projecting to open within three years. We are discussing um, potential collaborations with them currently, but really I just see us growing as a mobile, nimble, lean outreach service, possibly with a site at our Dynatrax uh, spot. Is the Children's Museum going to do science stuff? Yes, yes, to an extent. Can you tell me more about like uh, programs where you would go and set up, like let's say at a, at a public event, like a temporary structure, something that happens in like a day or two days? What kind of program do you offer to the community? <coughs> Um, we just said we were just recently at a Chihuahua's baseball game where they invited uh, like 4,000 different students to come and watch a baseball game. They also invited different presenters from the community to bring some of these hands-on science activities for kids. And so we brought our uh, programmable uh, musical banana piano that teaches kids about conductivity and electricity and circuits. Uh, so they could come play the banana piano, learn a little bit about the flow of electricity, um, all in about five minutes, maybe 10 or 15 if the kid is really interested in the topic. But we bring a, a tent structure, tables, tablecloths, information, flyers, things like that. That's a shorter activity. We're also looking at using the same mobile pop-up space to, say, be at a park in the spring or the fall when it's a little bit nicer set up and maybe schedule times where, you know, 10 or 15 kids can come in and uh, take a, a longer program. But that would have to be scheduled. We can't just have people kind of showing up for that. You mentioned uh, booth uh, sponsors. How much, how much does that take? It would depend on the booth and how big of a setup we're going to build. Right now we have grant sponsorship to physically build the booth, but some of the materials and educational um, activities that are going to go within it could use a little bit of funding to develop further, create signage around and things like that. Um, I have to work it out specifically with the sponsor. So you are saying that you want to remain a pop-up, nimble, all that, but you know most large cities tend to have something like a science museum, and also had one that was taken down for the baseball stadium. But uh, you know, do you see as the population grows a need to go back to the, some structure similar to that, along with the pop-up? Uh, if the children's museum is what they're projecting, then right now I think they're going to meet that need for a long time. And I'm, I'm just speaking for me personally, not for I think possibly. You know, we're, we're a nonprofit. Our job is to serve interactive STEAM education to the community. And if that's through a global outreach service, we'll do it. If it's through a physical building, then we'll look at that too. Do you know if you are unique or are there other museums doing what you're trying to do? That's a good question, like what's our value proposition, what makes us special as an organization? I think we are somewhat unique, especially for this region. Uh, right now there's nobody in the whole of the border region that's really doing this exact same thing, save maybe Explora up in Albuquerque. Do we have a special unique value proposition? Uh, Hands-on STEM activities, STEAM activities, no. That's, that's a common thing throughout the US. What does make us unique are our dinosaur tracks. 
there are very few of those around. And I think the, the combination of those two things really allows us to do something a little bit different within this community. But is it enough for sustainability? Of our organization? Yeah. I think so. I think right now we're in a pretty excited, exciting uh, growth phase of our organization. We spent a long time kind of closing up shop, closing down the museum, liquidating assets that we couldn't make mobile, rebuilding our board, and now that we're doing things in the community and interacting and building partnerships, there are more partnerships and grant funding available than we're able to pursue with our existing staff. So I do see it as sustainable. Right now we've been operating in the black for the last year. A lot of our um, a lot of our existing programs generate fees which pay for themselves. So we have a pretty diverse stream of income within our organization. So based on what's going on right now, uh, and the fact that we've been around for 40 years, I do see us in a sustainable growth phase. I can't say exactly where we're going to be in 10 years. You know, if we'll be in a physical building or we'll be still doing kind of the STEM uh, outreach. But the need is definitely. There. And I see us being pretty well positioned to address that need. Any other questions? questions? These are good questions. Thank you guys. They are. What can we as the Hub of Human Innovation do for you to help promote Insights Help Pastor? Like us on Facebook, you can share our current events. Go to our website and join our newsletter. About once a, once a month, twice a month, I'll send out a newsletter with all of our new programs, our next year night, our next upcoming dinosaur track tours. Uh, if you or uh, friends, uh, one of your businesses would be interested in sponsoring one of our events, that's always a huge help. Um, but really, just come participate in our programs. Tell your kids, teachers about our summer camp offerings. Um, and if you, you're really, really into it, of course, volunteering would be great. <coughs> From 8.30 to 10 at Carnitas Querétaro, where we have about 40 business professionals. Our guest speaker is uh, Peak Behavioral, and it's Mental Health Awareness Month, so it should be a great event. And for those of you who are not warning people, we have our once a month cocktails with friends at the Alamo Draft House. It starts at 5 o'clock. The first 50, I think, you get a free drink. I think if you're a mother, you get two because it's Mother's Day in Mexico. Oh. I'm just kidding. Do you dogs have dog mothers <laughs> for, um, for mommies and all. But you're, it's a great event. Hopefully you can join us. If you have any questions, meet with me after the meeting. It's Teachers Appreciation Week. You're going to give the first drink to teachers? If they're, wow. Uh, uh, not doing mothers. They're going to go they deserve more. Thanks, Rob. I want to teach yourself. Excellent. Good morning, everyone. Seven forty-five until nine. Uh, one Thursday each month, once a month, uh, we have our Eastside Business Alliance uh, breakfast networking meeting. Um, it's held at the lunchbox on Buckner off of uh, Montana, across from the golf course, and we do have two speakers. Um, also on um, Friday, we have our cafe Juan Dulce for the El Paso Hispanic Chamber. That's going to be at the Alamo Draft House Cinema, uh, 7:30 to 9 a.m. Hope you can join us for both or either one. We have the uh, Northeast Business Alliance, which is the third Tuesday, and it's uh, on uh, McCombs near Manila. If you're familiar with Northeast. It's at 7, 7.45 in the morning. The restaurant is Lo Rico Pueblo, and I believe the guest speaker is going to be the Western Tech, Northeast Business Alliance. Thank you. What about the West Side? 
That'll be the fourth Tuesday, and we meet over at Los Galleros at 8 o'clock in the morning. I think that's May 22nd. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Carlos Martinez for those who don't know me. I'm the CEO of the Colombian Innovation. I'm just curious, who is here for Economic Development Week, or that you, as you, you hear about uh, this because of Economic Development Week? Well, welcome to so Economic Development Week is an initiative of, of the city of El Paso. There are a number of conversations and events happening all over the city, so I just want to say a, a little bit about how do we feel, feel in on that. You know, El Paso has traditionally had an economic development strategy focusing on bringing you know, people, bringing businesses here, and we are about creating uh, businesses here and helping entrepreneurs grow their businesses. And we're also a platform for organizations and for conversations that are important to create uh, uh, you know, new economic opportunities, new initiatives that you know, create the, 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 that educate the newer generations for careers in science and technology, such as in San El Paso and others. So welcome uh, uh, for those of you who are here for Economic Development Week. Come again, with, this happens every Wednesday, and there are a number of other initiatives happening this week uh, around, throughout the city because of economic development, which I just wanted to agree about. Yeah, I have two. The uh, Veteran Business Association monthly breakfast is going to be uh, Saturday the 12th uh, at 9 o'clock, Iconumba Restaurant. You can meet with some veteran business owners. If you're interested in veteran issues, everything from homeless to economic development, uh, we'll be talking about that. On the 23rd, I have some invitations with me. Our signature event is Memorial Day breakfast. And we do this the Wednesday before Memorial Day so everybody can go out and have a good weekend. This year we're going to try to honor all the casualties from Fort Bliss, the tenant units out of Fort Bliss. And as always, first responders in El Paso Police Fire EMS. Uh, it's an emotional event. Uh, it's a free breakfast. You don't have to pay to be there. If you want to display your business, it's a nominal fee for a table. If you're not for profit, it's free to have a table. So uh, I would encourage everybody to uh, join us if you've never been to one before. We do the POWMIA uh, ceremony. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Tom Haney. Just want to add on to what Bill mentioned. Um, Saturday, uh, Claudia uh, Lard is involved from FriendNet. She's going to be talking, presenting how to start your own franchise. So it's good to come learn about you know things to do if you want to get started opening your franchise. Um, also, run the um, tomorrow if you can't make the Monday or, or Monday or morning or evening uh, exhibits. There's also I do a lunch tomorrow at, um, at a form of pizza on the west side of cryptocurrency. It's usually about an hour long, but a lot of other people come and talk out a network about cryptocurrency, things to do, how to get involved with it. I also uh, do one next Tuesday here on the, on the east side for um, Famous Dave as well. Uh, both, both events are 11.30. Thank you. Hi, I'm Emil Rodriguez with the Dialogue Internet Radio Network, and I want to let you know that one of your presenters has now has a podcast on the Dialogue Internet Radio Network. Uh, our good buddy here, George, uh, Whit Whitmire, and uh, he's already done a blog that, uh, as a matter of fact, on the, just on the impressions alone on the Facebook page, 383 people have already noticed, uh, noticed the impressions on there, and you can go to the dialogue, dialogueep.com and go to the podcast page and listen to what he had to say, it's great information, and he'll be updating us, and he'll be part of the uh, Dialogue Internet uh, podcast library. Um, I just want to mention one thing. Um, Matt mentioned earlier this morning to check in on the One Million Cups app. So the app is different from our Facebook page. So if you could download the app, it's very easy to do. You can check in, let everyone, it goes directly to Kauffman Foundation, so that helps us out a lot. And then also on our Facebook page, you can check into the hub that you're attending One Million Cups. So you can do both those things that you're into the hub. Yes. Um, so, other announcements that we have, the El Paso Hispanic Chamber is hosting Managing Credit for Business Success. Their next, in, they have a series going on, their next one is June 7th, and it's going to be on business loans. And then the Small Business Management Institute has also a series that they are getting ready to start uh, tomorrow, no, next week. Sorry, I'm already thinking it's the middle of May. Um, it's going to be on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and it's going to be held May 15th through August 9th. 
And the first one is Introduction, introduction to Strategic Planning, and it'll be on the 15th and 17th of May. And then here at the Hub, we do host legal office hours the third Thursday of every month from 3 to 5. That is a free service for you. So if you are interested in that, and you can come and talk to them about any types of legal issue, legal services, correct, Ernesto? Yes. Anything that, that, that you need help with. And you do need to register at least a week in advance. Yes. So if you're interested in that, get with us and let us know. We can help you out with that. Um, and then also, introduction to social media marketing um, by the El Paso Small Business um, Administration. Learn the basics of social media. It is on Thursday the 17th from 11.30 to 1. Um, from the Office of the Governor and Economic Development and Tourism, they are hosting export initiatives. And there are several events, like all across, there's um, one in Houston, and there are all across several locations. So if you're interested in that, come see us, and we can get you that information. So, um, and of course, um, everyone's already mentioned the veterans um, events that are coming up, and networking events coming up tomorrow and tomorrow evening. So we hope to see you all there. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Sri. Before we present our next uh, presenter, uh, Student Advertising Federation at UTEP, I would like to uh, take this opportunity to recognize Lori Banich, who is here from UTEP. Lori? Hello, Lori. How are you? All right, thank you for attending this morning. And we have another cup to give away. So I would like to encourage everyone to put in a business card uh, first thing in the morning when they come in. So, Rosalind, you can please pick a card. Any card. Uh -oh. so two, two cards. Okay. Well, that's hey, the one that I got. Know that one. <laughs> <laughs> huh? That was me. <laughs> oh, was that? Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, y'all are so nice. <laughs> How about if I give them both away? You can share. You can share. Can I? Can I give another one away? This time I want to go ahead and uh, present Student Advertising Federation of UTEP. Thank you very much. Uh, hello everyone. We are Student Advocate at UTEP. My name is Emily and I'm the president and this is Kenneth. He's my vice president and we're a student organization. We focus mainly on professional development for our students and that includes doing work for clients on campus and clients that are off campus. So we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so Student Advertising Federation is affiliated with the El Paso Ad Fed and represents a professional organizations of students who are interested, have interest in the world of advertising and passion and desire to join the industry. So uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of the El Paso Advertising Federation, but basically all the ad uh, agencies, they have their own little collective called uh, El Paso App, and we're kind of like the feeder organization, so once we finish and graduate, we just gradually move up into the world of advertising in El Paso and the Porter region. Okay, so uh, this is a, a quick run through of our general mission. Um, again, we're all about promoting and understanding the advertising industry as it pertains to student development. Um, so that also encourages um, advertising professionalism in our education and kind of supplementing the areas that we feel are not being um, given to us in our general curriculums or uh, degree programs. And also to apply these skills on uh, social matters, we work, we're open to working with any type of client, including nonprofits. Um, and we, it's all again to develop our, our individual abilities and the abilities of our team members. Um, we promote fellowship and free exchange of ideas and that's our general mission. Alright, so yeah, so Student Advocate gives students the opportunity to network, build experience, receive professional development and gain recognition while having fun with people interested in the advertising. That's why we're here. We are networking right now. So thank you all for showing up and we're going to shake hands afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> uh, these are our faculty.
faculty advisors, we are advised um, by professionals um, who are actually part of our faculty now. Um, we have uh, Professor Rhonda Dory. She comes to us from 20 years at San Diego in the advertising in, uh, industry. And she teaches advertising campaigns and creative strategy and copywriting to uh, our students. And then we also have Dr. Yudi Sun. Uh, she got her PhD from the University of Texas at Austin. And she uh, worked for a long time in the nonprofit sector in Seoul, South Korea. And she currently teaches media planning and buying and advertising for social good and uh, public relations, which I'm currently taking both. All right, so here's what we do to help our clients. We do advertising, of course, social media marketing, branding, graphic design, logo creation, video production, script writing, promotion. And so, example, here's some of the logos that we did for a, a student organization called the Miners uh, Cybersecurity Club. They needed uh, rebranding, they needed a whole new logo because uh, the logo they had was like, it's kind of all over the place, so we just kind of streamlined it, simplified it, and made it look all nice and fancy. <laughs> You guys check them out too, like they do robot fights. <laughs> so now I'll talk about uh, some of, just a couple of our previous projects. Um, we did a book drive for our UTEP alumna, Sandra Salas. She uh, runs Creative Gong, her own creative studio. And we did a book drive for her when she was uh, looking to collect books to give uh, children in Quade schools. So we helped her out with that. Um, we also did a mini campaign for the Student Government Association at UTEP and we created uh, videos to help them promote um, getting involved with the Student Government Association. So we didn't focus on any one candidate running for the office, we focused on the office itself, getting students in general to be involved in the student government because UTEP um, is generally a commuter school, so people don't stay long on campus. So this was really to get students to get involved and just run for any part of that student government association. And then um, Kenneth actually gave a seminar for the El Paso Parks and Recreation Department about YouTube and uh, any, every, anything and everything from setting up their accounts to uh, managing the accounts, to seeing the analytics and the insights from those accounts, how to generate content, and we gave them a brief seminar on how to work all things YouTube. And these are some of our student accolades, so we're very proud of uh, our students. These are some of the companies that our students work for currently or after they graduated, they now work for, so that includes Access Multimedia, uh, the Houston Dynamos, uh, Candlelighters of El Paso, Wet and Wild, LAQ, Taco Tote, um, Kenneth is uh, account executive at the UTEP Prospector, and he also worked on the Emma Cosimero campaign, as well as uh, other students who also work in other sectors. So that is what we do. Uh, we focus generally, again, on student development and getting any type of work that we can to help our students get that real experience hands on. So we'll go ahead and take your questions. Uh, yes. So, so do you, are, are, is your activity based on internships? Are you, you know, are you fee based, or how do you, how do you? Use um, it? We do have students that have internships uh, every week. Actually, UTEP uh, posts new internships on the our job mind site, and we encourage our students to take part of those internships. When we take on work from clients, we do um, charge fees. And each charge is based off of that individual client and what they need. And then we assign uh, our best student students to work on those. And me and Kenneth work with those students as well as our faculty advisors to give them advice and help them along the way for each of those projects. So the internship is a separate thing and this is an organizational activity, right? Yes. So we provide um, we provide the students internship opportunities based off of what is already in UTEP's job mind site, and we just give, we take that, because honestly, most of the time, that stuff is not really seen by most students. So we take that and we put it on a platform for where our students will see it, and a lot of our students have gotten internships out of it. This is kind of a two-part question. Part of your objectives is to interact with the community, correct? Yes. And, and so, 
Regarding that, how, what are some of your objectives with interacting with the community? And regarding how your fees work, you know, how do, how do you feel your fees justify comparable to the marketing firm or ad advertising firm that has 20 years experience, you know, working with clients compared to students that are learning how to interact with, with clients? That's a good question. We don't typically have a lot of big name clients generally because we are students, so, um, but that also relates to the fees. So if you do a project with us, it's going to be an insanely lower cost fee than if you were to go to an actual advertising agency or, uh, or marketplace that does that uh, in the industry itself. Um, hopefully that answered that question. We do also uh, like to take on projects with nonprofits, in which case we adjust the fees or maybe even do pro bono work as long as it's providing our students um, with actual hands-on experience, then we would want to take on that job. And also to reiterate, uh, a lot of like, as far as like bigger clients, they're starting to create their own in-house agencies. So like GEC, for example, they had they just this year they actually created their own in-house agency. They're not going to be like outsourcing anymore. But a smaller organization, the ones we usually work with, probably not going to have their own in-house agency. So that's where we would come in and help them out. You sir, who are most of your clients, or where they usually come from? I guess. Um, on the, most of our clients right now are coming from campus itself, so in-campus clients, and uh, like the Minor Cybersecurity Club. And uh, we've recently done a lot of agency tours with ad agencies around town, and that's kind of also supplementing our professional development um, sector, where we're going and actually getting to know the professionals who work in these ad agencies, and they're giving us a tour of what they do every day, what kind of things that we should be focusing on if we want to get a job in their industry. Oh, we got three. Okay. <laughs> so, what, so how do you use the, pro, the proceeds, the fees that you charge? How is that used in your organization? I, I, I hear that you're part of UTEP. Those proceeds go to UTEP? So those proceeds stay within our organization and they go to fund any uh, conferences or travel trips that we might take and also food to get members to come to the meetings. <laughs> uh, so, but yes, mainly, um, there were a couple conferences that we wanted to attend. Uh, there was one in Houston that we've been trying to attend, but the uh, setup of the organization wasn't quite set up yet, so we couldn't make it out. But in order to make those trips, that's where the projects that we do, the money that we get from that, it goes into funding those trips. Almost like a fundraiser type group. First. Do you have any uh, mentor in the industry that's working with you other than your professors? Other than our professors, uh, when we went to our agency tours, they are not um, on board with us full time, although we are uh, trying to associate ourselves with what we are associated with the El Paso Ad Fed. For a long time, the El Paso Ad Fed kind of went on a little bit of a hiatus for a couple of years. They're barely starting to uh, gain back ground and they're having a mixer, I think, what, next week? Yeah, next so week. So we're going to attend that mixer and, uh, but to answer your question, really, we're always looking for anybody who would mentor us, who would let us shadow them, who would give us some insights into their business, that would really help us also. Okay. You got a question also? Hey, easy question and a longer one. Um, how long have you guys been around? Oh. Uh, well, the organization itself has been around for years, but uh, as far as two of us, we kind of took over in uh, 2017 when the previous seniors graduated, and we kind of had to rebuild it because they didn't give us like passwords or any of the social media sites. <laughs> 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 so if you look on our social media right now, it might not be that impressive, but it was that we were doing they did give us a box of VHS. So you guys remember what those are? From 2002, so if you want to know what happened in 2002, we got that. So it sounds like you guys are growing as an organization. Uh, if you were able to do what you want, where do you see it ending up in the next five, ten years? Well, in the next five, ten years, I I would say the goal is that all of the students who are in AdFed right now have um, high demand jobs within the marketing and advertising agency. That's really the goal. We want to give our students um, the experience and the capital to where when they graduate, they don't have the kind of deathly cycle of, oh, you don't have experience, you can't get a job because you don't have experience, you can't 
get experience because you don't have a job. So that's kind of trying to break that cycle. And when they graduate, we want all of them to be in those industries, um, really just right then and there once they graduate. So that's the goal. Do you all have any involvement in uh, helping to grow the advertising industry in El Paso itself? <coughs> Well, I think um, since we are working with the El Paso Advent, that's really where we're trying to get with them to even help them uh, rebuild after they went on their little hiatus. And they told us actually of the El Paso Community College wanting to start their own student Advent. And so we're trying to get with the El Paso Advent to help them. Since we had to rebuild UTEPs, trying to get them and help them re uh, start their own at EP. Not really a question, but more of a comment. It's interesting because it's, you're under the university, but then allowing you to run a business inside the university is not usually not normal. Is what I'm saying. What I'm saying so. We're extraordinary like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we see it more like uh, this is how we fundraise by um, actually providing services, and student organizations are allowed to fundraise with it. Yeah, most of them like bake cookies and sell them and sell, sell candy. No, we actually do what we go to school for. So. Can I ask one on that? Uh, so the University of Illinois, for instance, has had a consulting group on various areas of business for at least 15 years. There used to be an entity at UTEP, um, the Small Business Institute, not to be confused with the Small Business Management Institute, that used to also do business consulting under the direction of professors. So it's not unprecedented, and it's cool that you guys are keeping that or doing that here in El Paso. That's really awesome at UTEP. So how difficult it is for you all to understand that you're in an industry that's changing every uh, two seconds yeah. as far as uh, you know, advertising agencies in general. Uh, if you're a graphic artist nowadays uh, and, and you're still working for an agency and, and you're the only one there, then you're lucky because they used to have like four or five of them working in, in, in agencies. Uh, how do you guys see the industry even in the next few years? You know, it's hard to say right now because if you would ask an uh, advertising professional in an agency right now, they might not even be able to answer that. But I think uh, a big shift, I mean, advertising is always changing every day, like you said. But And I think it actually gives us an advantage because uh, we're college students right now and we can kind of see like, you know, the elders in the advertising agency, they might rely a lot on traditional media. And we're, you know, in this day and age, it's really, you know, you should focus more on the digital. And we're seeing that more and more. And so it's kind of like we're, and we're learning about these things in our classes, new media advertising, uh, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, using those platforms and medias as new ways of advertising. And really, what people want to see from advertising. They don't want you to just say, buy my product now. You know, they want the consumer experience. They want to be involved with your brand. And that's really where I think advertising is also going to take a change. Yeah, also, um, I said the traditional, you know, advertising has always been like invasive, like just like, sh or shock value, like, boom, hey, here we're here. But now it's, it's co going more towards your advertisers like inserting their brand into like everyday life. So it, you see these companies that like, for example, Amazon, they, they used to be a bookstore, now they're just like selling everything. They're becoming like, <coughs> part of it the everyday life of like Alexa and Google that Siri and yeah. That's a good answer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions? Are there any agencies who would not charge for your services? Uh, nonprofits, uh, and, and again this would be on an individual basis, but uh, mainly nonprofits, uh, any type of work or people who are, especially nonprofits who are just starting up, um, we would consider that. But we would also talk to our faculty advisors. They advise us on all of our pricing and charging. All right, bye.
or if you want to come present to us and give us a little uh, presentation about your business and how you got started, I think that would be one of the ways that you could definitely help us out as students. Thank you very much for your contributions here today. I'm very excited about your value proposition for our community, everybody. We would like to present this cup to the Student Advertising Federation of Utah, so if you want to. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yes. All right. All right. Thank you very much. And I do want to take this opportunity to wish a very special person a happy birthday. One of our organizers, Nicole, has uh, turned. Nicole, how are you today? If you don't mind us. Yeah. I'm hiding. You're hiding. Yeah. You're hiding years old. Right. Everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Nicole. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.